Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can download information from the internet using Java. Specifically, we're going to be using the JSOUP tool. Um, it's an API we can use to actually incorporate into our project. I'm using it as the JAR library for that. As you can see right here, I've just gone to jsoup.org and I'm going to the downloads page where I can download the JSOUP. Um, this version is 1.14.3.jar, so that's the file we'll be working with. When you download it, I put it inside the folder of my project. In this case, it's the web scraping demo. As you can see, I've got that JSOUP JAR file right there. And then I can either do that manually by just saving to the directory or I can go over and I can drag this file from the downloads folder and send it over here in Eclipse to that folder by just doing it and choosing it to copy. Either option's great. Once I've got it downloaded to my project, I need to make sure I actually load it to my project so my project knows how to use that jar. The way I do that is I right click on the project name, I go down to the build path section, and I choose add external archive. And from there, now that I've got that directory posted, oh look, there's jsoup.jar. I just click on that to select it and choose open. And it's already out on the build path, so it won't be added. So I've already got it, but no big deal. And so it puts it right here in that reference library right here. So you can see I have that jsoup-1.14.3.jar. So that's in there. So now I can have access to it inside of my project. And so I'm going to my imports right here. So it's in my package web.controller. And here are the imports I need for uh, pure Java connections for another video. But for the jsoup library, all I needed, of course, is the IO exception just to handle error handling. And then from the jsoup library, import org.jsoup.jsoup. And that gives me access to all the static methods I'll need. And then I have import org.jsoup.nodes, that document to treat a web page as an actual document using the DOM model. So if you want to learn more about that, take a look at some of the resources. There are a whole bunch about there. So what I'm going to do right that now, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the actual file I'm working with, or the <coughs> take the actual method we're working with. I've got my public static string method called read web page jsoup. And I pass it a, J, um, a string address. And I'm using a static method because this is a utility type uh, method. It's one I don't need to create an instance of anything. I just simply need to send it the, stat, um, the string address and return back the information I need. So the first thing I'm starting off with is I have a string variable. I'm naming it page contents because again, I give really boring names that describe exactly what's inside or what I'm working with. And then I'm assigning to it the page contents of angle brackets address were not read. So I'm using a default error message right there as my default initialization. So in case I have any errors, I have a great value to start off with. Then I have my try block. Again, a try block means this code compiles, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work the way I expect it to. It might throw an error or something like that. And so I try and I make a document and I name it the creative name of web document. And then I assign it jsoup.connect. So I'm using the static method of jsoup connect. And I pass it the address. And then I call on that result, the connection, I ask it to get. So that's going to get the document from that connection. And then I'm going to assign that um, value inside there. I'm going to go to page contents. I'm going to replace what, the error message with the title and a new line. Because if I've actually made the connection, cool, let's go ahead and put the title in there. If it fails, it's going to either catch the illegal argument exception or the IO exception. But I'm assuming it does, it does work. I just grab the title, then I put the text in there, which is the human readable text, which saves me so much work. And then I'm going to do dot trim. So if there's any blank space at the front or the end of what I'm working with, I'm going to trim that out because I don't really need to see extra blank spaces at the front or the end of my text file. And that gets my string value of human readable text right out of that. I catch an illegal argument exception for a bad address. So if that string address isn't actually a good web address, it's going to go over here to illegal argument exception. That's the type that it works with. And I'll do page contents and I'll add the address to that specifically. If there's some problem right here in the connection or in the dot get right there, I'm trying to actually convert that information. That's going to be handled right here in the IO exception. I'll uh, catch that IO error. And I'll page contents plus equals the IO error dot get message. So if there's an error with that, I'll handle it there. Finally, I just return the page contents value and I can make sure that works. So let's go ahead and take a look at the controller, see how this function actually operates and what the results are with that. I'm in my controller and as you can see right here, I have my start method, it's called from the runner. And I say string text equal IO controller and I'm doing my static method called read web page jsoup and it has an empty string and I'll print out the text that happens from that. So I'll play this result right now. Blank string were not read, it must apply a valid URL. Okay, cool. If I give it just some garbage URL, not really real of course, and I hit play on that, hit run again, and that's a malformed URL, so it gives me a different error. So it's, oh, that's not enough right information, so it's not going to be read. Now, if I just simply pass the information, like say, for example, I'll go to wikipedia.org, and I hit play on that one. And Wikipedia is not read. It's a malformed URL. I don't have the protocol information specified, so I need to make sure I have that in there. And so if I go up here and I add the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, and then hit play, and boom, 
I now have the Wikipedia text entry right here. So I can easily use that um, information from using the, uh, the JSOUP. It easily extracts the data. And if I want to do more with that, if I take a look at the JSOUP API, I can do even more with that extracting data. I can get the HTML values out of that. I can do all sorts of cool stuff. And it has really good handling for doing all the work of extracting that data. So it's a great way you can make that happen. Take a look at my other video on how you can do this using just straight Java. It's a little bit more complex and a lot more unwieldy, but you can see how you can do that using only Java built-in tools. Hope that's helpful. Cheers. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.